I've never seen it this bad down in here before, but there's probably 75 to 100 trees here that are going to die. Dave uh, Alpers is a cherry die. farmer. Is the other dead? Alvin Block here. grows apples. I don't see any apples here. And Brian Cronenwet raises grapes. These are uh, the stage where the buds were when they froze, completely dried out. All three farmers grow different crops, but they all share one thing in common. None of them will make any money this year. You work all year to produce a crop of cherries, and you can lose a crop in one night. It can be frustrating at times. Well, you get paid once a year, so I, I work every day um, for that one payday. We will work all year long and not have an income. When a hurricane or tornado comes sweeping through town, everyone can see its aftermath. But when you're a fruit farmer, a natural disaster can look like this. A few warm days that come a month early, followed by a cold spell that wrecks the crop. It may not look like it, but the fruit farmers in the state of Michigan have been hit by a tornado of trouble. In March, we had uh, roughly two weeks of uh, high 70s to 80 degree temperatures. And then after the 15 days of warm weather, then we had freezing temperatures. And as what happens is that bud is chucked full of water. So at freezing temperatures, the bud froze and killed the pistol. For apples, it's kind of a little bit of a worst case scenario. All three farmers have lost 90 to 95% of their crop. On that limb right there, there's probably a hundred blossoms on it, and there's one cherry that's alive, and that's right there. Profits all going on the ground, all froze off. That's how it is with fruits. If you lose a crop, and then that's it until the next year. Yes, it may not look bad, but Michigan just lost one billion dollars in crop damage. When the natural disaster is the size of a fruit bud, the outside world may not notice until later this summer when they go to the grocery store. Consumers will definitely pay more at the grocery store this year. In Traverse City, Michigan, Scott Rensberger for the Weather Channel.